Ready? Okay. All right. <coughs> 516, let's call the workshop to order, please. Roll call. Council Member Schwer. Here. Council Member Wong. Here. Council Member Cole. Here. Council Member Nordby is absent. And Mayor Mongi. Here. We have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. So moved. Council Member Schwer. Second. Council Member Wong. All those in favor say aye. 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 First topic tobacco ordinance. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Hello. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Um, do you want to introduce, am I introducing this? Or you doing? Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> or, um, last, last time um, we reviewed the tobacco ordinances and um, we were short a couple of Council Members. So um, Katie has come back to uh, bring some options to add to the <laughs> ordinance or change um, so we can move forward with it and bring it to the November 17th meeting to adopt the ordinance. So in the ordinance that we talked about last time, there's some federal and state updates um, that would bring your local licensing or ordinance into compliance with those. Um, again, they set the minimum. And then there's three other pieces in that ordinance that we kind of are above and beyond, um, but are public health best practices. Number one was restricting the sale of flavored tobacco products. The second was capping your number of tobacco licenses that you want to in your community. Mm -hmm. And the third was proximity. 25% of the state right now is covered in a flavor restriction. Um, or those municipalities are covered. There was a map in your council packet um, and a handful of your neighboring communities. This on flavoring, um, as you know, the state follows local municipalities. There is was a bill in the legislature last session, and there will be another one um, going forward this legislative session. But a lot of people say you have great power here at the local level. Don't wait for the state or the federal government to take care of it. Do it at the local level. So the flavors. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and that can look a handful of variety of ways. Right. Um, the next one is capping. So how many licenses do you want to have in your community? Um, some people have done, some communities have done this through based on population, based on just a number. Um, some Bloomington and Little mm -hmm. Canada have put it at zero. So through attrition, um, you'll just slide through and you won't renew any tobacco licenses. Um, so the current ones would stay put, but then as they leave or move, you just wouldn't renew them. And then the last one is proximity to youth oriented facilities. Um, I, I, we heard also through um, the cannabis presentation right after me, but that that is not allowed to be sold within 500 feet of schools, I think, or um, daycares, parks, et cetera. So it's kind of along those same lines of like, where do we want our tobacco shops or where do we want tobacco for sale in, in North St. Paul? Do we want it across the street from the high school? Probably not, but we're not gonna put anyone out of business, but we're, as we go forward, where do we want these, these products available? So those are kind of the three pieces that are above and beyond state and federal law um, for discussion and for uh, conversation. Conversation. Thank you. Okay. So, this was discussed with the last one. I was the only one that wasn't there. Uh, right. Jason, uh, wasn't Jason, there. Jason wasn't either. Yeah. All right. Brought they brought samples, so they saw what they all look like. Yep, we okay. saw what the different uh, wound and some of the different uh, products look like, and some of the other ones seems to be a lot more. Okay, marketing aspect, mm -hmm. feeling it can be, and the sure. names of flavors. Uh, a little bit about that. The, the brochure you or the handout you gave us is Quick Trip and uh, Holiday. Of course, that other one that's right across the parking lot next to Holiday, so that's all within the same circumference then, right? Correct. Is that all we have for? Yes, sir. seven Seven is tobacco, uh, uh -huh. holders. These are just the two examples yes. you showed. Yes. Okay. Holiday, Quick Trip, Nikki's, and then the tobacco. Who's the other? Oh, wait, there's four. Over on 11th Street. Mm -hmm. 
hour, two hour day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A quick trip. Quick trip. Nikki, if this is next door. Um, the regular tobacco for <coughs> by Polar Nutrition. Five. Target doesn't sell it. Always worth that many. So. So oh, it's seven per about. Is that what we're looking at? Or is the discussion is <laughs> on? <No>. Okay. <laughs> Whatever the new census is. Thank you. <laughs> what was that it's number? Rain man over here. <laughs> I thought so. I got that number down. North St. Paul Tobacco, Nikki's, yeah. Fuller Lounge, Division Street. Fuller Lounge? Lounge? Interesting. Sales. Division Street, Quick Trip, Holiday, two Holiday Stations. Division Street. I didn't realize bars could. Fuel. Fuel. So they, the bars um, can still division. sell tobacco products. Oh, um, we saw them kind of Even. decrease after Clean and Dry because they were selling Thank it as you. a convenience. Um, mm -hmm. But now that bars are smoke free, we've kind of just seen them. But they hold, still hold the license. Mm -hmm. All right. So obviously, you guys discussed. <laughs> They didn't really. They, okay. they said we were going to wait for you. Yeah, we. The twenty-five percent. Give me that. It was our coverage. I just looked down. My map out. Twenty-five percent of the population. Twenty-five point eight seven percent of Minnesotans are covered by flavored tobacco policy. Okay. So. Um, hello. Hi. Oh, sorry, traffic sucked. You voted in favor of everything we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Sounds great. Hey, well, welcome. I agree with everything he said. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Um, so I don't. I have. This is what it looked like in your packet. Yep. Um, so about twenty, little over twenty-five percent of Minnesotans are covered by a flavored tobacco policy. Some of them look. Their policies look a little different as they have evolved through adoption. And you know, ten years ago, the first policies were were kind of cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And now we know what best practices are. We know what works, and they're not so cutting edge anymore. And they're pretty comprehensive. So. Um, Yes, the variety of them is in the metro, mm -hmm. um, but there is Greater Minnesota as well included in that. Okay. Our neighbors, Maplewood, surrounded. What are they? Maplewood. Um, we had actually students address. Try to bring it up. Um, North St. Paul North High School students met with Maplewood Mayor, and she was not interested in um, doing anything. Three sides of them, so that's their. Our closest. And Maplewood is surrounded by Roseville, which has it, St. Paul, um, I'm just looking at my list here, um, a handful of other communities. So, yeah, Maplewood. Little Canada, Little Canada mm -hmm. does not have flavor restrictions, but they have capping. So they've set their cap at zero. Maplewood. Oh. They didn't want to, their Little Canada was originally concerned about enforcement. Um, because they contracted the sheriff's department to do all their enforcement checks. Hmm. And to be honest, enforcement of this has not been a problem at all. We did a survey in Ramsey County this summer of communities that have flavor restrictions and don't. And the, of those that have flavor restrictions, almost all of them were following. And they would just point to the city, sorry, we can't sell this. Mm -hmm. There was some confusion with some um, synthetic nicotine products about if they could be sold or not, but again, that's just education, and, but they were mostly following. I think seven is a lot. That's it's the great. population. <clears throat> um, I also think that in conversation with the budget, we were exercising the fact, um, and I brought it up, so I'd be happy to sensibility and accountability for that, at uh, talking about a dispensary in the city well, so if we're going to exercise flavors and getting rid of those, in 2025, when that becomes something, you, there are flavors of that. So that's something to be considered. And if we're looking at that being a tax savings to our uh, community by bringing in a dispensary, then we're going to redo the ordinance for they're not, it's not welcomed. So. Your flavor canvas is what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, I know. So I think that would be the cannabis policy. It is different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're separate. Okay. Yep. Separate policies. 
Um, I think this was something that we talked a little bit about, and it was in your presentation. Um, the amount of targeting um, of youth is um, so when I'm even looking at this map, um, 500 and 1,000 feet, um, you know, it's, I think it's going to be, I'll just say it'll, it'll have to be striking a balance, but I do think that seven retail for 12,500 that way, and then the cannabis rule of thumb is 12,000. How far? Right. Yeah. How far do we want to go? And at, who, at the cost of who? Well, and the, the other important factor is, is we have to keep in mind our what current businesses are in place, established, mm -hmm. and have been here for a while. Mm -hmm. We don't want to put them out of business. Right. And that's why some income. say attrition is. So that's, was it, who's got capital zero? Well, it can uh, Bloomington. Okay. So what we talked about last meeting was we can put a cap on. Right. Which doesn't mean we shut anybody down, but as they go away, right, we don't replace them. The city doesn't grant additional licensing. Okay. That was that's the okay. that was the cap conversation. That's the attrition conversation, mm -hmm. and then the cap is three or four, whatever. Right. Okay. So really well, they they tie together. If you cut a cap at three, and we've got seven. You gotta work your way down. So you work mm -hmm. your way you work your way down sure. only when they choose to city's not pushing anybody. Mm -hmm. It's when they choose to no longer do business. Mm -hmm. Profitable enough. Yep. Okay. We're done with it. Did I get that right? You got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you're looking for guidance in one, two, three, four areas. Is that what I'm understanding to move forward to council with? I think we said three, but three, so yeah. if you, okay, so number one. Okay, four. What do you, okay, what do you got? <laughs> so I have adopt, basically make yeah. our statute the same as, to tie in with Fed and State. Correct. And yes, for, I didn't for, yes. for the two that weren't here, our mm -hmm. law still says we can sell to 18 year olds. Right. So, oh. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to get ourselves aligned with um, the state, the, the state and federal laws. So I'm of clearly in support of that of of that one, moving that one check mark forward. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a consensus, Jenny? Yes. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, I can't. That, was, that to me was kind of the no-brainer. So I wanted to move yeah. the easy one out. Yep. There Thank you. Go. you. Now it's hey. up to you guys. Exactly. Yeah. Now we're down to three. Okay. Good one. <laughs> so then I still have flavor. I have cap, um, capping, and I have proximity to school. Those are the three that I yep. still have left. Okay. Yep, you got it. All right. I'm done. Flavor. My job's done. What, what, what's the next easiest on your bot on your list? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, we've we've kind of danced around a bunch of them. Do we want to just focus on a topic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should pick one. You pick. Well, Go ahead, Mayor, you pick. Let's pick um, a cap. Cap. I would pick youth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to them. Wow. <laughs> Let's talk about capping. Seven is awfully high. Good. Do we have, did you share statistics, and I apologize if you did last time and I didn't retain it. Is there a per capita average out there somewhere um, you know, you pulled out seven per 12,364 residents. Yeah. I think a big part of it, like she said, too, was poorer neighborhoods have a lot more than other neighborhoods. Right. So they really focus on low income. Yep, low income, absolutely. Yeah. And so they're going to have a lot more. Right? Yep. So that's why I'm trying to throw out. Do we have too many? Do we not? I mean, per capita, do we have too many? Do we not have enough? Where? I where's our baseline where we start? I know. I have this document. Um, uh, Oh. And the chief. Mm. Who, can anyone call the chief? <laughs> they they have it in their email. Okay. Um, okay. Sure. I think you guys are kind of in the middle. Compared to Maplewood and New Brighton are really high. Okay. That was all I was looking for. Their population is a lot higher. Right. Right. Correct. Is it but per capita, they are very, very high. Okay. That was that was 
I don't think I need, I didn't need an exact number unless oh. others do. I was just looking for where are we on the, on the spectrum. My concern is putting people out of business. Um, I, I believe that the seven that we have, the two that are with Polar Lounge and the um, Allegion, which is the Division Street, correct? Um, the one right next to Legion, that's the gas station. Gas station. Arco. Oh, Arco. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it's right, okay. right next to it. Yeah. Space that one out. Yeah, like look, it comes and goes. It's open and it closes. It opens and it closes. So right. we're open right now. I guess. It's been good so far. <laughs> so, oh, so we're not. So just from what I'm hearing, we just stay at seven. We just say we can't. We're not going to allow anybody new to come in and get a new tobacco license if we if we cap it at seven. Correct. If you left it at seven, no one new would be able to come in and get a new license. I'm too short. Fine. <laughs> yes. But if someone chose to go out at a cap of seven, another tobacco company could, another tobacco seller could come in. Correct. Because we would be. Yeah, then we would, then we would figure yep. out the, the, how many we want to have as the sweet spot. Right. Yeah. So right now we can't add any more, but if we subtract, do we? Right now there's nothing the holding us from adding any more. So we don't have nope. a cap. Exactly. So, yeah, right okay. now they could come in. Okay. Anybody could open it up. Mm. In, in the 2040 plan, and, and I'm specifically thinking of the target quick trip area, um, what is that slated for long-term goal? And would a cap, would a cap hurt development there? I'm thinking like if a Loves or a, a Bucky or, uh, wanted to get in that area to compete with the quick trip. Um, for for to be in line with our 2040 goals, um, am I remembering correctly that that's slightly slated for more of of that type of business? Um, just looking at it now. <clears throat> business going into where the old. Capita. What you were saying, like if there's another gas station supermarket that went on the other side of the corner, then they would be. Well, I think it's a. I don't believe any of the big names will, would even consider going into that area if a uh, tobacco license was off the table. Um, the, the the previous history, like the holidays and stuff. Now my information is a little bit old, probably about seven years dated. If they had a, a list of check boxes and, and tobacco being one of them, if that wasn't available, they would not look at that area. So a cap does potentially um, narrow down the pool of the people that might look at certain areas of our city, right, wrong, or indifferent. Mm -hmm. um, so just something to be aware of. I guess like when we talk about buffers in that area of the city, um, it's really close to the high school and that's where I mm -hmm. got that buffer mm -hmm. in particularly. Well, and, and I was even thinking, not as, well, I suppose, yeah, that would be the spot, but also it could have potential impact when the 36-120 interchange goes down if, if a big, a big name gas station wanted to go in there, not having the cap of a tobacco could potentially put us off the market. We could get a business like CVS that is dedicated. Right. To oh, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just yeah. think it needs to be something we're aware of. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. As the, the field, uh, McKnight Field is considered one of those Zones, you can't do it, so it would be pretty much right across the street from any development there that McKnight Field would be. 
And can I ask, youth-oriented, was that, was there an age range that was focused on, or does that include <coughs> daycares and things? That was a part of the cannabis bill? But, uh, Youth-oriented facility, Mayor, also. Um, any facility with residents, customers, visitors, or inhabitants, which of which 25% or more are regularly under the age of 21, or that primarily sells, rents, or offers services or other pro products that are consumed or used primarily by persons under the age of 21. Includes, and but, includes but is not limited to schools, playgrounds, recreation centers, and parks. We got other schools thrown in there. We got that school right off a of second that Bur or down that corner. There's a school in that one. We got a school across the street through here. So I mean, we got quite a few schools. Park, a lot of parks too. Mm -hmm. We can look at the per capita, but then what's the per capita over 21? daycare on the corner of 11th and right, mm -hmm. right next to the park mm -hmm. side. There's a certain distance. I know that uh, the city manager gave us one, 1,500. Is there certain ones that uh, different it's, places use? Is there a... It's in between, I think you're right on track, okay. between 500 to 1,000. Um, I think I also, we have to acknowledge that we're in a community that's pretty developed already mm -hmm. um, compared to someplace else. And so acknowledging where we're at and saying, okay, this is what we have. I mean, we're not going to, we don't want to put anyone out of business, mm -hmm. but we also, how do, going forward, what do we want this to look like? At that point, wasn't that just capping it? Because it, all the businesses that are surrounding it are near educational. So when you have holiday, that's okay. <clears throat> we have a list of where which parks are the same thing, right? What? Park on every corner. Mm -hmm. So if we moved off of CAPS and onto proximity? Yep. Should we decide what we're going to do on CAPS? No. Nope. Okay. I think we should cap at six because that's, I mean, we'll be putting people out of business. Well, seven is one. No, right. no, we won't. You won't put a single no, person out of business. No, we cap at six. Nobody goes out of business. It just means that they're six. Right, sorry, people. they're not going out of business. Yes. Yeah. They would They would no longer have their license. Um, so. They would still have their license. It would just add as usual until they decide they're not going to sell it anymore. They can't say, oh, we're going to give up our license and somebody else is going to get it. It's going to be. Ah, okay, never mind. Get mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it stays put, we just don't add any more in. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out when they go what the number, if we go on that path. Any consensus on cap or no cap? depending on what the outcome of that is, then we can move to a number or a non-number. So mm -hmm. I am, I am, I would be in favor or consensus of a cap. Mm -hmm. I agree. I as well. I am not. I'll do, I'm for a cap. Yeah, as a reminder, this is not a vote. Yep. This is just a yep. consensus, yep. and that we're only trying to give staff direction. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So, so the second part is I say cap pick a number. I mean, I cap it at seven. Okay. I mean, because we don't know when. Well, city would know when a license is done. Um, no. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you need a? You, we need a number for a cap. Yeah. Okay. You do need to insert it into your language. It's easy cap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, say, I say seven because that's what we currently have. We're in the middle of four.
Suddenly. Look at Jesus. <laughs> well, I mean, be, because of my earlier statement, allowing for growth, I would cap it at one more than we currently have, cap it at eight. I'm fine with five to seven. Yeah, I don't. I'm somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. But you need an exact. Oh, here. Seven. seven. Okay. Well, it's like seven. Seven it is. Seven. Um. A license is transferable with the sale of the business, correct? And it automatically transfers? You guys get to decide that as well? Okay, thank you. Do you want it to be transferable? I can give you, in Bloomington, they they really struggled with this. They have it transferable to one family member and only one time. But it, then the city has to determine what is a family member. So then it got messy. Um, That's something we need a direction on tonight. We have to five items now on my list. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, do you, you know, well, let's just say, like, okay, so you're going to cap it at seven, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you want it to be transferable? Why, our liquor give me a, are not. Well, give me a reason why you would transfer it. Or it's your phone, and you know, all of a sudden you're saying you're buying this store, but by the way, you can't have cigarette, or you can't have tobacco right. anymore because now it's only with me. So then that person loses maybe some revenue coming in. Or if it's not transferable, I leave the gas station in John's name, and I sue to run it as a general manager for the next ten years because I can't transfer it of his name because I can't get the license. Sure. Um, and, and that's what used to happen when there was the cap on the liquor license in some of the areas. It is people found a way to get around that uh, and that's where my mind is going is sure. you know no more liquor licenses but john has one so no john stays it even though he doesn't want the business i run it for him yeah. and i'm paying him i wasn't processing that properly okay and then the opposite of that is what st paul's dealt with is that they try to take a license away from bad actors mm -hmm. and they find someone to transfer it to and it's the same bad actor mm -hmm. that continues to take the community down it wasn't a friend or whatever For me, just in reference of time and mm -hmm. keeping everything, mm -hmm. I'm in favor of, how do I word this, um, not, a, what, I want the city to be able to have, a, for that exact reason, I want the city to be able to have a say. It doesn't mean that they can't sell the business and a license, they just need to apply for the license before the sale. I think that works. Because you still have your cap at seven. It's not like nope. you have a cap at zero. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because we don't want to take a mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. We can decide if it's going to be mm -hmm. done properly. Yep. Options. Okay. Kind of the same thing we do with liquor licenses. If somebody's coming in and want to know what they're looking to do before mm -hmm. yep. we grant the liquor mm -hmm. license, that was kind of the direction that I took when I thought through this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So transferable upon council decision? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, I, that's fair because that doesn't hamstring them. Mm -hmm. If they find somebody good, we're not mm -hmm. taking away some of their business. Good. Okay. Proximity. Proximity, feet wise. That's why I have to look at the five and thousand. And remember, these are new licenses for movement. Correct. You're not putting anyone out of business with us. Do we have any part away from anything else that we do? I don't we? think we have anything. Just pretty much anybody is right now. They wouldn't be there if it was applying new. Mm-hmm. And if the cap goes in place, the only way this would be in effect is if someone voluntarily got rid of their license and someone new wanted a new location, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, if they do that, now we have to figure out what 
<laughs> yardages, the feet between is a thousand or five hundred. That makes me think it's like how far are they traveling or moving? Are they good or are they, you know? Be helpful if I had a little bit more information um, before here. Um, two. Oh, yeah. two. Um, and then um, be also highlighting as I use oriented facility because my understanding is this is used. So um, if we have a general idea where they are, then so we were talking about the daycare facility on 11th, and then there's that 24 hour, and then the world. Would this affect in home daycare facilities? Have to be licensed by is 25 percent of their. I go back to the definition. Is 25% of the population under 21? Yes. Um, yeah, they probably would. Proximity to license would have granted. I'm just reading the definition too. I go back to all these great <laughs> attorney definitions. Um, and our fire department needs license to take care of. Yeah. I mean, um, things can better because yeah, if they're licensed, mm -hmm. then the license is right here. Mm -hmm. put a cap on it, and we don't know where that license taker is unless we pull mm -hmm. the data that's provided by the state. So ideally, a cap sounds nice, but you're going to have to contact state to figure out where these in-home daycare facilities are. But this only goes into effect the buffer if it's new. If it's new, correct. So right now we're got seven. We're not we didn't do any more than seven. Somebody has to relinquish theirs or move. So and it becomes this stage after we're done to see where it is. Right. And that's just something mm -hmm. that as a city we're gonna have to keep in mind before granting it. On, I mean, beyond the policy office. I would think staff is, is going. It would be. it comes to us. Circle Holiday has two parks and if you call Veterans a Park, school right across the street. And this other school. <clears throat> so to me it's that much difference between five hundred and a thousand. There's so many different schools and parks and everything else. If you're screwed. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so I guess you are. To, to again to break it down and keep things moving, break it down into two questions. Mm -hmm. Um you know, what's what's the what's the opinion towards putting a buffer zone or a proximity up would be the first one and then depending on where we align, I guess would be um is there a is there a feet? Everybody 
want a buffer? What? I like it if it can be post dated. If someone bought a house yesterday with the intent of putting in a, a daycare and did all their rules and research, I don't want to necessarily pull the rug out from under them on something that they might have worked a long time for. So if, if we could post it and say this goes into effect a year from now or something like that, so anyone looking to start a new business would have enough time to do the right research. Um, I like that, and plus we're keeping it at seven, so it's not like people are going to make a rush to open up a tobacco place because we can't because we're keeping it at seven. Well, I was so, thinking more of the, more the daycare. No, it, I'm just it, saying, but mm -hmm. it, on the other way, they're not rushing right. to get one, too, because we're not adding more licenses. Yeah. So we're keeping that the way it is, but yes, if somebody started something and, you know, had just happened to be across from mm -hmm. from where the, from where they're selling it. It's an interesting way to look at it. So if I interpret you correctly, you're looking at someone who wants to open up a daycare that's within the buffer right as opposed to the flip-flop yeah you know someone could have bought a house that's 400 feet away from there they're you know going through all the motions you know it usually buying but but isn't that buffer even come into play because there's nothing new so the buffer really doesn't but come the daycare would be new but that's just for the not just for the um shops themselves Me, I My understanding was I could not open up a in-home daycare within that buffer once we... If we had a new license. No, it's under the license section, mm -hmm. and it says no license will be granted to any persons or retail establishments that is within a 1,000 feet of a youth-oriented facility. I actually don't... But that's the license of the tobacco. tobacco. It's nothing to do with somebody daycare. popping up next mm -hmm. to there. I don't think that... Okay, okay. I was misunderstanding yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that you couldn't get a new daycare license within oh, the buffer as well. No, nope. I think that's a good clarification. It is oh, good. Okay. It's good. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. After a full day of work yeah. and a commute, you're doing really good. <laughs> then I like the buffer. Yeah, time to think in the car. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long it's as it doesn't affect the, the daycare It's process. all about the tobacco license. Okay. Yep. So I'll put the tobacco, then, I'm, then I think we'd be fine. I'm fine with the I'm fine with the buffer. Mm-hmm. Oh, buffer everybody? Thousand five hundred. I'm thinking five hundred. Okay. Seven fifty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like your splitting. Seven fifty one. Seven fifty one. Prices are high enough. You guys got the consensus, so I'm I'm not for it. No, we don't. Oh, you're not for the buffer. Okay. No, I'm not for a buffer. Okay. Oh, okay. I I like the idea of buffer. I don't really have a preference. Um. As long as, it, as long as that buffer doesn't affect the daycare side of it, uh, if it's 500 or 1,000. Um, 750 to split the difference, but. You can put 750 in. We can just insert it. All I have to do is change it. I just try to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's her and I, so it has to be. Again, I don't, I don't have, I, right. I mean, I don't have a strong opinion either way. That's why I okay. split the difference between the two, yeah? yeah. 750, right or down. All right. Yeah, I, I don't have a strong Strong opinion as far as the size of the buffer. Yep. Okay, 750. Well, insert it. Yep. Okay. Flavor. Flavor. And I'm making check marks on my sheet. Yep. <laughs> so, what this would do is rest would restrict or end the sale of flavored tobacco products. Um, you have seven licenses. Two tobacco stores. Tobacco stores, yeah. Two tobacco stores. Mm -hmm. The tobacco store definition is 90% of the revenue has to come from tobacco products. That in mind. So some communities have, oh, I, okay, going forward, everyone is included menthol. Menthol is absolutely included, wintergreen mint. There's historic um, targeting, as we talked about last time, with those products. They should be included. Um, so that's what we're talking about with we say flavors. Um, some communities have put the, all of those flavored products in a tobacco shop with the intention that young people and families aren't going in there. And so it's less access and appeal like we talked about last week. Other communities have just said no flavored products. And all of those options are available in Ramsey County. So everyone did something a little different. But that's, if they're selling it now, they sell it now. Correct. So that's not changed. Oh, well, no, 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 no. If they're selling flavored product right now, they would have a year 
to remove those products off the shelf. Well, that's so, the only one different that yes, we're doing, is, we're talking about. I just want to be clear. Yes, yes. So this one, now we're changing what they can do for business. Correct. The other ones is new yep. and all that. Okay. Correct. So. so in Roseville, mm -hmm. when they voted, um, they gave them, I think, a year and a half almost to say, in the next year and a half, you have plenty of time to notify your wholesaler, et cetera, to remove these products. And therefore, they kept their tobacco shops at four. So their, their current four are selling slightly products. So therefore, we would cap our tobacco shops. You could. Okay. Or say that only flavored products are available at tobacco stores. Only no flavored tobacco. To be honest, the easiest way to enforce it is to just be clear across the board. But I wish Officer Mao was here with me. <laughs> she got me into this mess. Um, so you threw a statistic out there that I'm left scratch my head on. Who enforces the 90% rule? The state. They audit? They should. And complaints have been issued, and they have a shutdown place. Interesting. Okay. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Can you say as a city, no flavored products through attrition? Like when the license transfers to a new owner, the new owner would not be granted flavored products, but we're grandfathering in ones that currently have it? You could. That's looking really ungame. For, yeah. for, for me, without a lot of at least talking to the people that currently sell it, I think that would be as much as I could vote for without knowing how much they believe it's going to affect them of the, of the seven that sell it. I'm not saying I'd vote one or other, but I, I would want to have a conversation with them before I'd vote m more than j just having it be attrition when the license transfers. Has anybody reached out from any of the stores? Has this been be notified as far as the newsletters that we're talking about this subject or Brian? Don't really know the changes. I know we don't know the changes, but we know we're talking about it. Once we know. So then that. they would understand. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people can't come in and talk about it. They don't know we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. So there is a requirement of a 30-day notice before any public hearing or vote, and so. Putting this into November allows for all of that 30-day 30, 30 plus notice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's all. Make sure it's just for yeah. you know. Right now. I don't want you to get in trouble. No. Right now you're here. That's great. No, no, no. But, you know, I, no, we I don't, don't understand want you to the rest yeah. of them exactly. Yep. I don't yep. want to be shutting people out of this conversation Correct. if they don't know what's happening. I think that if you want a flavored tobacco, you're going to go to Maplewood, Oakdale, White Bear Lake. If any of those places have it, you're taking the business from our city and moving it to other cities to get flavored tobacco. So I'm not in favor of messing with anybody. I would be if it impacts our youth. I mean, they're being targeted like very explicitly, very clear. You look at the Minnesota Student Survey uh, this year, uh, you'll see a, a huge decline in like traditional cigarettes, mm -hmm. but a huge uptick of vape pens and all of that. That is something they're really, really using quite often. I'm I'm looking at it from that lens. Do you believe there's going to be a stat, state mandate soon? Um, where is this taken out of all the city hands, city's hands in the state? That takes the flavored products away from the entire state. That that's my assumption is coming, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of why I'm I'm of the camp that we slightly wait for the state to do it. Mm -hmm. My, my my guess is 25 or 26 that that is coming from the state. Mm -hmm. um, that I mean, and that's my uneducated guess, just from mm -hmm. reading and, and t talking to people. Well, it makes them even more. They want them more, so that's another thing too. It mm -hmm. becomes this whole.
think for me, up until this piece of it, we haven't impacted a business in town. Correct. Um, I don't necessarily know if I have enough information to determine. Okay, so while I'm not in favor of flavor, I'll, st I'll state that. I don't think I have enough information to make that decision that would impact somebody else. So I guess I would make one of two recommendations. Um, we table that piece of it, go forward with everything we have, have a larger conversation later, or to your point, I'm also of the belief that within the next couple of years, the state Thanks. will probably come out and do something. So up, up until now, we haven't impacted anybody's livelihood. Correct. So, and until I have the opportunity to have somebody come in and say, how much revenue would they be losing? Well, how does this impact? Recognizing the whole targeting thing, because again, not, not in favor of flavor, but let's, I, I don't know if I can make that decision for, for somebody who's had a business. So I asked if there's a spot where people can. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Hold off on that then. Mm -hmm. Friends in charge. So when it comes to council, it'll have everything that we discussed and the flavor piece will not be addressed. That that was a question, I'm sorry, it's not much a statement. <laughs> okay. Yep. Pull it out. Yep. I have uh, one thing that was not addressed on the checklist that I would like to just bring up and we don't have to do it now. But um, after reading the uh, copy that was uh, the attorneys provided input, I was looking at um, the changes in which we discussed uh, what violations and fines. So we increased it from 300 to 500 on the first <clears throat> offense, 500 to 1,000. And the third offense, I think, is and um, licenses are completely revoked. That's in there. Um, there's also, um, I think, from my perspective, um, if I were looking at a 500 and then a thousand and then having no license at all, that's a, a large jump in terms. Of, seems almost punitive, or not punitive. Yeah, it just seems. Um, Whereas, I think some places are doing 30-day suspension. Uh, what is the economic impact? Are we going to revoke those licenses on the third time, or um, are we looking at his seven days revenue? Are you thinking of adding a small time to the second one or adding a, a smaller time to the third and adding a fourth? There isn't any I saw on the second one, and so there's... Right, I just there. didn't know which way you were yeah. feeling. So, yeah, I think that um, to completely revoke the license is um, based off of that trajectory is is um, much, and um, I would be a little bit more comfortable at looking um, what the... Uh, impact for seven days versus okay and then adding a permanent like on the fourth or adding a yeah I think on the notes it said some places mm -hmm. are revoking on the fourth one yeah that out there for... I like that when you Mayor Council members. So if you, I have the language in front of me. So um, it was originally at 200 for the first violation, mm -hmm. and then it got bumped up to 300 because that mirrors state law. Mm -hmm. And then the chief had asked for the 500 to go in there. Got it. So, um, and then for the first violation. So do you want to go back to the 300? Mm -hmm. Leave it at 500 for the first violation? Um, 
Okay, that's fine. So then for the second violation, it was, state, it was at 400. State law says now it says 600. And then chief asked for $1,000 for the second offense at the same location within 36 months period. Plus it's $1,000 plus a three-day suspension of the license. And then the third violation went from 500 to 1,000 with a 10-day suspension. I, I sometimes need to like literally so draw. both of them out. are 1,000, second and third? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But, it, but it's just a longer a violation. And the state law does require a uh, the state law does require a revocation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Within um, within thirty six months, a thirty day suspension. Which offense is that? The third. Third, okay. Well, that's kind of what we're So 1,030 days. Second is 1,007 days. Three. Three days, okay. So, days. yep. And then the third. would be a thousand dollars and a ten day suspension of license. It would be helpful for me in the next day that out in like mm -hmm. a visual format. I think I would be able to follow it. And then just we can easily compare. Okay. And knowing whether subsequent violations reset the clock or not would also be after helpful. 36 months it gets reset from the first one yes everything's within Every a 36, 36 months, months is, a, is a window so if they had two in 12 months the first one would fall off the second one would live until it's 36 months came up so if i get my third violation 35 months after the first one my license is suspended for 10 days i serve my 10-day suspension a month goes by and i do it again am i getting another third your first would, yes, because okay. your first yes. would fall your off. First one falls, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so lay that up. Yep, okay. please. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Are we good? Great, Great discussion. Well, thank you. I appreciate your information. Dan doesn't right. get it done. Okay. Dan can do it. I know he can. And I'm only aware of one business that we've ever had any struggles with in the city and it's it's been talked to twice i don't know if that was in 36 months or not but but it's not it's yeah. like the majority of the businesses are fine yep it's always the one percent yeah threw it up for everybody I want to review all this then with charts. And... Yeah. I can do the charts. So, uh, that's all I think. If you had a whiteboard right here, I'd be all over. All right. Well, thank you <laughs> thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming back. Yeah. Thank you for your great public service. Oh, thank you. All right, Dan. Thanks again. And, uh, I didn't say at the beginning, but uh, we still have an audio issue, so we have a uh, uh, we're sitting at the tables with a with a Cisco uh, Polycom phone. So just to let you know, just in case uh, people are still having audio issues, we're still working on it. So hopefully it's good. Hi. Hey, sir. How are you? Good. All right, we got a little less than 20 minutes, so I can't do all the talking because we'd be here way too long. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so. I frame this as the big picture, and here's the here's the reason why I frame this as the the big picture um, is that um, 
it's not just good enough to just look at what our current year budget is. It's not just good enough to look at what our financial statement is. Um, just a quick hypothetical. Um, call my wife up and say, hey, how much money do I have in the savings account? She says, oh, you got uh, $10,000. And I say, uh, are we in a good financial position? She says, yes, we are. And I said, hey, guess what? Uh, we need a new furnace and an air conditioner, and I think we probably got about a year, year and a half, and we're going to have to replace it. Ooh, geez, there's $10,000. And then I say, hey, you know, the roof is going, and there's probably another sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 for the roof. Um, so where was that in my furniture? Where where have I got that laid out someplace? Sounds like well, my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's the capital planning component to it. And then the other component that we need to look at is that we need to look at, okay, what are, what's my annual income? Um, what are my annual expenditures? And that's the budget. And then we make assumptions uh, based upon that and try to escalate that. And so today we're just going to kind of look at, um, we're not going to be able to get through everything um, today, but we're going to look at a financial plan overview, assumptions in the financial plans, reviews of the strategies in developing the financial plans, unknowns and future considerations, and then some discussion and questions. And we really do need to get to the discussion and questions because it's gonna have an impact of how we wanna end up handling the CIP. Sure. Um, because the CIP, like I said from the very beginning, is a huge driver in your financial plan, in your outlook, in what you wanna do for your priorities, your goals for the city. And, and once you make those decisions, we lay that into with where we're at with the budget, with you know looking at what are our current funding is available and then project out, you know, what we're going to need for additional funding. That's where you're going to end up seeing where we had to, you know, our suggestion and recommendation, which you've adopted at this point in time in the preliminary budget, is to increase a 2% for streets and a 1% split between um, parks and facilities. Um, and so it's just kind of a, it's a simple equation. If you're going to see on the financial plans that there's a December 31st, 2020, to cash and fund balances. And yes, if I take that financial statement out, I've said it and, and, and hopefully for all the years that I'm here, I can present after the auditors are done and say, hey, we're in good financial position. But to maintain our good financial position means that we need to do planning. Um, and we need to estimate our future revenues and operating expenses based upon assumptions. Assumptions may be wrong. I'm not gonna defend each and every one of them. They're gonna change. And it's a, it's a living document. If we outperform one year versus the next, the plan gets adjusted. Maybe we won't have to have rate increases in a year and so forth. And then you need to, the big key part to it is you need to have the capital outlay expenditures as identified in the CIP is what we're using today. Um, and so I am going to, so I don't do all the talking. I'm gonna turn it over to Mary Kay because she's much quicker than I am. Either that or we'll be here till midnight. <laughs> um, so, um, and Mary Kay has done a heck of a lot of, of work um, with me on developing these financial plans. So I kind of want to give her some opportunity to speak. Um, and uh, so, Mary Kay. Um, do you want to pull up the water? She is going to actually take you through, there was financial plans that were um, added. She's going to take you through one of them and kind of identify everything in one. Yeah, so just as an example, I thought we'd look at the waterfront because it has a lot of the, a little bit of everything basically. So it would be a good example to go through. So then you can just look through the rest when you have more time. Um, so once we have that up. page 40 yes oh because <clears throat> i was it is number 47 okay. um in your worksheet in your file yes okay and so what this financial plan does is it kind of gives a history of what has happened over the last few years and then from 2022, we figure out where we think we're going to end up in 2033 over the next 10 years. 
So basically we start with the expenses, which are about in the middle of the plan. And so we are assuming that the expenses will increase 4% between 2025 and 2033. And that 4% applies to the personnel, supplies, and contractual services. And that 4% is a pretty standard increase across all of the different funds. Um, and then you will see the capital line. And here is where the variation is from year to year. So for instance, in 2023, you can see the budget for this year is 213,000. And it jumps around. And if you look at 2028, it's all the way to 4.8 million, which includes the water tower that year. And so that line is really why we're doing this is because we're gonna have these huge swings in expenses and we need to figure out where we're sitting cash wise and fund balance wise and see how we could afford it. Um, and then there's also debt in this fund. And so there's interest payments. And the water fund has also traditionally transferred out about 205,000 to the general fund for maintenance. And so those are all the expenses that are going into the water fund over the next 10 years. Um, any questions on that part of it? I know I went pretty quick. Okay. Thank you. So then the question is how can the city afford these huge expenses, particularly the capital? And so it's being funded by three different ways. And so if you look on top, you can see we're increasing the rates by 4.5 to 4.75% in this fund over the next 10 years. And then, so that's the first way that we're paying for these. Um, and then if you look down towards the bottom, there's the cash flow section. And in the years 2025, 2027, 2029, there's a line for bonds issued. And those years we would actually recommend issuing debt. And those are for the major street reconstruction projects. All the other capital would be paid for with the cash on hand. And then the third way we would pay for the capital in this fund is if you look at the 2022 column and there's the cash at the end of the year, which is 7.5 million. And if we go back up to the expense line for the year, you can see the total expenses for the year is 1.4 million. So basically there's over four years of cash sitting in this fund. And so what this plan does is that also uses up the available cash. And so if you look at the cash at the end of the year, you can see it drops significantly in 2027 and 2028. So basically that is paying for the new water tower if that gets approved by council. And so I know that was really quick, but that's kind of what we're trying to do here is looking at the expenses, what departments are requesting in the CIP and to figure out like how the city could afford it over the next 10 years. And at the very bottom, or if you go back to the cash end of year, you can see at 2022, once again, we had 7.5 million. And by the end of 2033, we're down to 2.6 million. So, you know, the question is how much cash should be in this fund, because that's a huge drop. And so the very bottom section is where we look at what we think the cash needs are for the fund. And so it includes the target minimum working capital, the working capital for the debt payments, and then the reserve for capital purchases. So the target minimum working capital, we're basically taking four months of expenses for operating. So that includes the personnel, supplies, contractual services, the transfers, and the debt. So that's four months of expenses. And then the debt payment is the principal payment due for the following year to make sure that we have that cash available. And then the target for the capital purchases, especially in this fund with a huge water tower, you know, the idea is to build it up and down as needed over time. So if you look at that line, you can see it is pretty high for a while, over 5 million because that water tower in the plan, but then towards the end, because at this point we're not aware of any other huge expenses, we can kind of bring that down which brings the cash that we need on hand down. And I know that was a lot, and I went fast in the interest no, of time. No, it makes sense, but there's also, or something bad happens. <laughs> I mean, you look at it, and there's not a lot of cash there. 
it would still cover over a year of expenses. Um, but yeah, it is a question about what the council is comfortable with and how much cash the council does want on hand. Four months is pretty typical. Yeah, we bill on a you know on a monthly basis, so we're no more than usually two months behind. You know, mm -hmm. so that's where four months is, is good. Um, component that I think the city in 2017 had a utility study that was done on the waste and water and wastewater, um, and they were probably about a six months, I believe four is plenty as long as you're pulling in your debt payments, which, which again, so where you could get into trouble is if there happens to be a big, huge capital need component to it. Um, so, I mean, again, it's kind of a, a comfort level, but from an industry standard, even after the 10 years, we're still in a very good financial position. You have a very good position. Always a risk at any time that you're, you're looking at that. But a point that I want to bring back that uh, up is that we're sitting at $7.5 million. There's another good indication that today we are in very good financial shape. What we've done with the plan is that we're not just raising our rates just to raise rates. We're raising rates and low and buying down our cash balances to be able to cover our, our needs. And again, it's the city council to make that determination that what's in that capital improvement plan is truly a need for the city. But um, he's done an excellent job and, and laid it out very, very well. And all of the financial statements are laid out in the same manner. Uh, some don't have as much information. Um, because you know, our fund, it's full revenue, there's expenditures and, and so forth. But, uh, they're all laid out the same, consistent manners, um, be consistent with the assumption. Yeah, so I, I you know, to me, um, looking at where we're at in the budget process, I think the city did a very good job of, of listening to the, the needs, especially with the streets and the facilities and, and the parks and, and it puts some levy towards that and hopefully we'll continue to do that into the future. Um, and then these plans um, can work. Um, the next component to it is the capital improvement. So is there any other questions with this? And just for time limits since we're, we're closing in, it, it, it's really... Um, And seriously, and I mean this with all honesty, um, Mary Kay is one heck of a great addition for this city. Makes my life Thank you, Mary. makes mm -hmm. my life so much easier. We have, I've got a sure. I'm clarifying question. Sure. The new water tower, the new water tower at Tower Park, is that being funded off of what we have now, and we're spending down for it, or are we going to have to put it in a levy moving forward, or in, do do some bond, or do something to pay for the water tower? Combination of rate increases and cash <clears throat> lowering our where our cash balances from that seven point. Right now, the plan would not be to issue debt for it. And again, if you remember, our debt for our site is, is pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're trying to avoid that. Um, we can't avoid it completely. That's why we just have those three years right now that that's in there. So we can start to build that cash up there from that 2%, because streets really going to be the biggest driver. Um, and streets, when every time you do a street project, you're hitting water, wastewater, surface water, um, those ones in addition. So, um, we've developed, I, I think, a very, a, a very solid plan. Again, um, there's going to be a future discussion, you know, on the PCI and the, you know, the road index, um, you know, and, and the cost could end up being high. But it's a com combination. Yeah. Is my only question is just taking a look at top line revenues. Um, the city's looking to increase revenues by 58 percent over 10 years. So that's if you have quick math, if you have a hundred dollar water bill. You're in 10 years, your water bill is going to be $158. So that's why I asked the question yeah, where the where the funding for the water. If... And again, if you go out and, if you go out and bond something, again, you know that 
you know, at that million dollars over 20 years, you've just paid $1.6 million. So where do you get that additional 600000 that would be you know, raising um, the rates up to, to achieve it? That's where you want to be more in a cash basis um, component to it. And kind of the interesting thing in that 2017 study for the water and the wastewater, had for like 2015, 16, 17, 18, 8.5 percent increases across the board. Moving out five and a half, six and a half, <coughs> and all the way out to the thing. So what we've got here isn't something that's totally brand new of a concept. Um, it's just kind of when your expenditures, just your operating expenditures, are continuously going up. Um, you know, I, I think it was uh, included in our, our wastewater. Um, the wastewater one, um, we just we just got or one of the things the thing met council so it you know, it's going up like thirteen percent. Um, well, that's one of the biggest components that, that <coughs> of, of our expenditures. But um, for sake of because we only have a, a few minutes, it's it's really to find out from city council how we want to go about going through the CIP um, in the budgets themselves. Um, each one of the department has kind of addressed what they had in their CIP. There wasn't in, in great detail. Um, obviously, we can go through absolutely every detail in there. We could spend 8, 10, 12 hours um, going through that. Um, with that, we've got one more meeting in October. We you know, have one meeting in November, and we're moving into to approval of the budget. If we want to go into great detail and have departments here, department heads here to answer questions regarding that, um, it may um, be wise to hire a special or have a special meeting um, just de devoted to the CIP. In addition to that, we still have enterprise funds, internal service funds, special, special revenue funds, and fees. Um, so I, I honestly believe, my recommendation is I believe CIP is, is of huge importance, um, and I believe that we should um, do it justice and have a special. Um, and, and devote towards that and have our department heads here to answer any questions. That's my recommendation. I agree. That's I agree. great. That's Especially when we have yeah. two things going in one night, you don't get enough time. So, um, uh, Jenny will we'll look at scheduling something up for that. Um, it's 628. Hey, can you believe that? I made some, we, we finished something up and under the 20. That's pretty hard to believe. Sorin, did you did you hear that? I, we wrapped it up that quick. <laughs> but I thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send emails, um, and then we can address them at the next city council meeting. Um, but really, have tried to give you that big picture. Again, um, you have the most important component. You have to make these deci tough decisions. Um, and then I want to leave you with just one final piece. Uh, there was an organization that had asked. Um, for some information, and then if you wanted, they would um, send you the results. And uh, they asked some questions. They asked questions of uh, okay. of what the 2024 uh, cost of living um, percentage was for cities, um, and then also what the property tax um, increased. And and uh, if you sent in your information and you wanted, they would give you the results of their survey. So here's the results of the survey. I guess at the end of the day, when I really look at it, us sitting at 8.5 isn't out of line. Um, I, I know it's a tough, it's tough, but what I'm saying is that we're not the only ones who are faced with, um, you know, um, needs. Um, but I just thought I would share that information with you, um, so you could uh, have that. <laughs> right, and there were there were some. Rogers. There's, there's oh, a 24, 24. 24. 24. 33. Uh, <laughs> You know, and usually when you see that huge increase like that, it's usually because they've got some big bonding issues, and that's what we're trying to avoid with the plan. People keep our debt at least level to where we're at, um, and, and move forward from there. Well, very important very stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. the information. Thank you All right. For your presentation. Well, thank you guys. Call the workshop. Do we want to? So moved, Your Honor. So moved. Second. For Wong, Council Member Cole. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So do we sit here? Yep. We can't go anywhere because of the oh, time. Pull up the chair. For real.
why we're oh, wow. digging in. Oh, I, I was going to make it ready for.